President Biden granted a federal disaster declaration to all counties affected by Beryl. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. It's 9 o'clock. In the Houston area, nearly 2 million customers still without power. The city expects only half of those to have power back by tomorrow. The storm is now responsible for 10 deaths in Texas and Louisiana. Nine of those deaths were in the Houston area. Cleanup is going to take a very long time, and there's no real timeline for full power restoration. Meanwhile, temperatures and humidity are soaring. Fox Force Peyton Yeager in studio with a look at the aftermath. Peyton. Heather, yeah, the biggest concern right now is turning the power back on during the dangerous Houston summer heat. This, of course, affects the safety of residents, the hospital system, debris pickup, first responders. Right now, the timeline is still unclear. And because there was such widespread damage, Centerpoint Energy and Houston city officials say today they were still in the assessment phase. The race to restore power is underway across southeast Texas as communities ride out the aftermath of Hurricane Barrel without electricity. Nearly 12,000 crews are on the ground. Houstonians forced to wait while in a heat advisory. We're doing everything we possibly can to see that your electricity is restored. It affects everything we talk about today. Our safety, our work, our church, our families our education. So yes, we're in constant touch with Centerpoint. We're holding them accountable. I talk to their administrators every four hours for an update. Centerpoint Energy, the power utility that services the Houston area, says the storm knocked out power for 80% of customers in the region. Its goal, to restore 1 million of the more than 2 million impacted customers by the end of day Wednesday. Oh, it's going to be days. It's going to be days. As for a timeline on the other half, Paul Locke with Centerpoint Energy doesn't really have one. I, I can't give you a timeline, but it's not going to be tomorrow. But and, and, and look, we live here, we work here, we have employees that don't have power as well. It's miserable. Nobody, nobody wants to sleep in a uh, house that's um, 85 degrees. At a Tuesday evening press conference, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick revealed Houston hospitals are inundated. We have a backup in our hospitals because they can't discharge patients because patients can't go home if they don't have power. Energy Convention Center will soon be opening to house up to 250 patients. Just next door at Energy Stadium, chopper videos showed significant roof damage. <laughs> Meanwhile, recovery begins with debris removal and traffic at a standstill as people waited at the pumps for fuel and food, including Chase Wembley, who survived a tree crashing onto his Houston home. How are you feeling about everything so far? I'm nervous. Why? Because living ain't right right now. Again, nine people across the greater Houston area died. This includes three people killed by fallen trees, two people drowned, and one died in a house fire. Houston Fire also says it responded to more than 100 carbon monoxide calls overnight. At least, at least two people were killed by carbon monoxide poisoning.